Hello, today we're in the conditional code chapter of Learn to Code 1 in the seventh activity called Decision Tree. Decision Tree. So uh, the, the uh, instructions for this activity are fairly simple. Test the state of the world to change your root. Okay, test the state of the world to change your root. So let's look at our puzzle here uh, a little bit. It looks like if we walk straight ahead, we're going to have things on every square. Uh, there's a gem, then there's a closed switch, then an open switch, then another gem, then a closed switch, and then nothing like that. So uh, definitely one thing we're going to have to do is walk straight ahead. But at times, we're going to have to veer off to the left here to pick up these gems, this one and this one. And at other times, we're going to have to veer off to the right to pick up gems like these over here. Now, before we go here, we should probably go ahead and run our code with nothing in it, just to make sure that the uh, puzzle gets set up exactly the same way each time. Okay, so I run the code. Yep, it looks like it's exactly the same uh, each time we run it. It's not one of these ones where random things uh, appear. So. So that's good. That'll help us plan this out. The, the big idea is to just keep walking forward, uh, but sometimes we're going to have to move off to the left, and sometimes we're going to have to move off to the right to pick up gems. Okay. Let's look and see if there's any way we can tell when we need to go to the left and what, when we need to go to the right. Okay. Looking at the puzzle, uh, how will we tell when we need to go to the left? Can you see any indicators on here? Yeah, so look at these, uh, the places you have to veer off to the left, they're all signaled by a closed switch right before it. Okay, so on the same row, if we see a closed switch, we know we're going to have to, first of all, toggle that switch, and then go get the gem that's off to the right. Okay, same thing up here, uh, this switch at the end, we're going to, if we find a closed switch at the end, we need to toggle it, and then go get the gem on the left. Okay. Now, how about to the right? How do we know when we need to veer off to the right to go get gems over on the right? Yeah, look at that. There's also an indicator there. If as we're walking down this path, we encounter a gem along this straight line, like here and here, well, then we know we're going to need to collect that gem, and we're going to need to veer off and take these paths down here to the right and collect these gems that are off in the distance here. Now, one nice thing about this is that these paths look identical. So we could probably write a function uh, that goes off to the right, say maybe solve the right side. We write a function called solve the right side that'll walk forward down these steps and collect this gem. And the same function could be used to come get this one here, walk down the steps, uh, turn to the left and come collect this gem. And then we need to go back as well. Okay. And also, same idea here on. Uh, when we need to turn left at these two closed switches, we can write a function to take care of that as well. We'll maybe call that function solve left side, and all that is is toggle the switch, turn to the left, move forward, collect the gem, turn around, move forward, and turn back to the left. Okay? All right. Uh, not bad. Um, so some of this code is given for us here in the example. It says here there's an example with a for loop in here. Um, so let's go ahead and type that in here, okay? Let's type this in here, and let's think about it as we type it. So there's a for loop, and I'll tap on the for here. For i uh, equals 1 up to and including the number 5, we want to do these things. And uh, you guessed it, the number 5, 1 through 5, indicates these, uh, these tiles straight directly in front of us. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Those 5 tiles. So that's what this for loop is going to do. It's going to move forward. And then it's going to check what's on the tile. And if it's a gem, we're going to need to go handle the right-hand side. If it's a gem, we're going to need to handle the right-hand side. And if it's a closed switch, we're going to have to handle the left-hand side. So uh, we can just do our conditional statements, which in Swift, that's an if statement. We say if is on a gem, 
we want to, uh, and the name they give us in the example here of a function, it looks like, is solve right side. Solve right side is going to come down here and pick up this gem. And it's also going to be used here to come down here and pick up this gem. Okay, now solve right side is not a function that's provided by uh, this puzzle. We're going to have to write that ourselves. Uh, not too, not too difficult though. Okay, then we have an else if we are on a closed switch. Is on a closed switch, then we want to solve the left side here. Solve the left side, and again. This is a function we're going to write in a little while. So there's going to be a little red dot about that, um, but not a problem. And uh, you know me, I like to have a little fun when I'm doing this, solving a puzzle. I see an open switch up ahead here, and I don't want to just pass over that open switch. I'm going to practice my else ifs, and I'm going to say else if is on an open switch. I'm going to do a fancy dance move. If I'm on an open switch, I'm going to spin 360, do our spin 360 move. Okay, so that again is another function we're going to have to write. Let's go ahead and write that one right away up here. Uh, remember a func function, you say func, give it the name of the function, spin 360, open close parentheses. And to spin 360, this means we want our, our, our byte character to spin all the way around. And let's do that with left turns. So left turn, turn left, turn left, and turn left. Okay, so if he's on an open switch, he's just going to spin all the way around just for fun. Okay, uh, let's handle the, how about we handle the solve left side also solve left side so that's going to be another function here function solve left side open close parentheses okay now what do we want to do to solve a left side well uh, this is what happens when we're on a closed switch and it's pr pretty simple we're just going to turn to the left move forward so that we're under the gem. Uh, but before we do that, let's go ahead, because each time we solve the left side, we also want to, we're going to be on a closed switch, so we should just toggle that switch as long as we're here too. Toggle switch first, then turn left, move forward to move under the gem, collect the gem, then we need to turn around and go back. All right. So let's say turn around, and again, we don't have that function yet. Turn around, move forward, and then to get back facing the way we were going, don't forget to do a turn left again to get us facing back down the main row. Okay, The main row I've highlighted here in blue. Okay, So that's solve left side. Uh, we're going to need a turn around command, a turn around command or a function, func turn around and let's say let's just turn right twice for that turn right turn right okay okay we've taken care of the left side so let's try the right hand side now so don't forget when we're on a gem we need to handle this right hand side okay there's a lot more moving in this right hand side it's a pretty far trip um, one thing I see we're going to need to do is we're going to need to move forward quite a few times. One, two, three. We're going to have to move forward three. So it might make sense if we simplify, since we're going to need to do this a couple times, let's simplify this and make ourselves another function here called just something like move three. Okay, And move three, all that's going to do is three move forwards. Uh, or we can practice our for loops for i in one to three. Let's just say move forward three times. So when I is one, we move forward. When I is two, we move forward. And when I is three, we move forward. OK, uh, so we can use this move three command in our solve right side, our solve right side. So func solve right side, this function, well, 
Uh, remember, it's only going to happen when we're on one of these gems. These gems are going to indicate that we need to solve the right-hand side. So let's go ahead and collect that gem before we uh, go down and get the other gem. And then we need to turn right to face uh, down this path, this long path. And now we can use our move three command to move forward three, one, two, down the stairs, three. Then we need to turn to the left to face the gem, a move forward to get under the gem, and then a collect gem to collect the gem. Okay. Now, uh, this might be a good place. Remember our comments? I'm going to put a comment in here. This function is getting long, so I'm going to put a comment in here that says, now go back to main path. Okay, because we've just collected the, our gem. This comment now will give me a little note that says the rest of this code is going to be getting us back to the main path and facing down the main path so we can keep on going. Okay, so how do we get back to the main path? Well, we need to turn around. We need to turn around because we just collected the gem. We turn around, we move forward, then we turn to the right to head back. Now we can use our move three command again. Our move three will go one, two, up the stairs, three back to the main path, but we'll, we won't be facing down the main path again unless we do one last turn to the right. One last turn to the right, all right? Okay, so that should be our solve right side. We'll run this. If we have any bugs or we missed something, we'll go back and fix it. Uh, so let's look at our main program again just to be sure this is okay. All right, for i in 1 to 5, we're going to do 5 move forwards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That'll get us to that last closed switch. But at every tile we visit, we're going to ask ourselves first, are we on a gem? If we're on a gem, we're going to solve right side, which takes us down here and picks up the uh, gem and goes back. If we're not on a gem and we're on a closed switch, we're going to solve left side, which comes over here and handles and comes and collects this gem and comes back. And if we're on an open switch, we're just going to spin around 360 and have some fun. Okay? All right. Let's try running this. And I'm going to run it in the uh, mode where I'm going to step through my code. It, this will help in case I see if Byte goes off, uh, does something I'm not expecting. If I have a logic error in my program, I'll be able to see what line it's happened on, or at least what function it happened in, so we can easily come back and fix it. Okay, so let's step through the code. We start in the for loop. I is 1. We move forward. If we're on a gem, we are. So we solve right side, which is collect a gem. Move forward 3. 1. I is 2. We move forward. I is 3. We move forward. Good. We're back into solve right side. We turn left. We collect the gem. Now we're going to turn around and come back into solve right side, which says turn right. Move 3. One, two, back up the stairs, three, back to the main path, and the last thing in solve right is turn right. Good. Okay, now we're back in the main loop, and we're on a closed switch, so we're going to solve left side. Left side says toggle the switch, turn left, move forward, collect gem, turn around, move forward again, and turn left. Yay, we did it. All right. Now we're back on here. We're not on a gem. We're not on a closed switch. We're on an open switch. So we're going to spin 360. Let's have some fun. There we go. And good. Well, now if the uh, last time we were on a gem worked, this one should work as well. So I'm feeling pretty confident now. Solve right side worked to clean up the previous right hand diversion. So it should work this time as well. Turn around, and now we're heading back. Move forward three. Okay, and here we're on the main branch, and we move, I is five. We are on a closed switch, so we're going to call solve left side. 
solve left side should work also because we showed it worked uh, a few tiles ago. Come back, and now we're back in and we're done. And White's very uh, happy about that. Uh, it says, congratulations on finishing the conditional code. Now, let's review here what we did. This is actually nice. This is a main. This is the main program, and it was given to us basically up here. We modified it a little bit to do our spin, but basically it was given to us up here, and it showed that we really want to just travel down this path of five tiles moving forward each time. But every time we move forward, right after we move on to a new tile, we're going to check that tile, sort of investigate what's on that tile, and there may be some kind of an indicator that tells us we need to go solve the right side or go solve the left side. And that indicator is if we're on a gem, we collect that gem and we go solve the right-hand side. If we're on a closed switch, we go solve the left side, which included um, toggling the switch we were on. All right, And we had a bunch of functions in here that we used to help us. Now, these functions, if you look at them, they're pretty nice. They all take care of one abstract idea. Okay, like spin 360 says, let's just spin in place. Okay, turn around means if we're at the end of a road and we need to turn around, we're going to turn around. Move three, it was just a nice abstract idea that we don't want to put move forward three times in our code and just make it long uh, if we don't need to. The idea of just moving ourselves three tiles can be abstracted away in a nice simple function and then we don't have to write move forward three times anymore. We just say move three and he'll move three. Okay. Now these, these are specific to this particular puzzle but they are an abstract idea, right? Because we noticed that that uh, the solve right hand side was the same in each one of these we could just make this abstract idea called solve right side and even if our puzzle was a hundred a uh, hundred tiles long and all the right side diversions looked like this all we would have to do every time is call solve right side and as long as they looked like this uh, it would get solved and the same thing for the left hand side okay and the uh, you know doing this creating these abstract idea functions solve left side and solve right side let us write really simple understandable main program that reads very well it just says for five tiles we're going to move to the next tile check if we're on a gem and if we are we're going to solve the right hand side if we're not we're going to check if we're on a closed switch and solve the left hand side if we're not on a closed switch or a gem we're going to check if we're on an open switch and if we are, we're going to do a little spin dance. Okay? All right, good. I hope you're really feeling comfortable with this idea of writing functions and abstracting ideas, and also with this idea of using an if statement to check what the conditions are, where you're at, and do some bit of code in, uh, in one case and a different bit of code in a different case and so on. All right. Uh, so that's it for this chapter. Uh, in the next chapter, we're going to be looking at logical operators. And that's going to take our if statements to the next level. We're going to be able to do really complicated things in our conditional code, in our if statements. Uh, really complicated things like grouping two different conditions together. Uh, so I look forward to that. That'll be a lot of fun. All right. Until then, if you have any questions, put them in the comments of the YouTube video. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you next time.